call to order the special meeting of the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education. This is a special meeting to fill the uh, resignation of uh, longtime board member Warren McFall, uh, and we're doing candidate interviews and um, so forth tonight. So could we please have a roll call? Mrs. Saradaki? Dr. Kulikowski? Here. Mr. Murray? Here. Mrs. Shermer? Here. Mr. Whitehouse? Here. Mrs. Winkler? Here. Mrs. Warner? Mrs. Cleary? Here. Mrs. Bauer? Here. Quorum is present. Thank you. Please join us in the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. So notice of this meeting was uh, given to the uh, borough clerk of Fanwood, the township clerk of Scotch Plains, uh, the West, the Times, and also the Patch. Um, so tonight we are uh, fortunate that we have three uh, people who are interested in this board position. And um, I think uh, that's uh, a wonderful thing. And we... Um, are going to have interview one candidate at a time. That's why there's one chair and microphone there. So um, our plan is to have, we'll go in alphabetical order. Uh, so that means we'll start with Cindy Clancy Warren. The other two candidates will go in this room and close the door. And You don't have to go yet, but that's, this is just the plan. Um, and we have the same questions that we're going to ask all of you. Uh, you have on the agenda a couple of questions, and then we have a couple more. Uh, so um, that then we'll go into executive session and have a discussion, and then we'll come back into public to um, make an announcement about who will be filling that seat. Um, and I want to thank you all for your benefit and also the public because uh, this is not a paid position serving on the Board of Education. Uh, all the people present and in the past have done this really because they um, cared about the, the kids and the school. Um, and uh, it's not only the board meetings, but it's also committee meetings. Um, most of us serve on other groups, uh, statewide groups, county groups. Uh, we, there's required training for board members, different training, different years, and, um, and there are other uh, special events recognizing teachers, graduation, all kinds of things that uh, board members uh, attend. So uh, it is a big commitment and we appreciate your interest. So that being said, I'll ask the two gentlemen who are further down the alphabetical line, uh, and we'll knock on the door and call you in a few minutes. And uh, Mrs. Clancy Warren, if you'll come to the uh, table. And what we decided is we would just have one person ask the questions, and I happen to be that person. <laughs> so the questions I'm asking represent uh, the entire board. And um, we'll start off with the questions that you have. Uh, the first one is, what do you think are the priorities that the district should focus on? And tell us why. OK. I'm not going to be, I'm sorry to interrupt you right at the get-go. Um, would you like to give her an opportunity to make a statement first? Great idea. OK. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself first? We Absolutely. do have it here in the letters, but, but the the I forgot the public doesn't have these. So. I, I, I would love to. Um, my name is Cindy Clancy, and I've lived in, in Scotch Plains with my husband, Tom Warren, for 19 years. We have two children who are currently in, enrolled at, at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School. My, I am seeking the open board seat because of a lifelong interest in child development, education issues, and community affairs. Um, I have a, a BA from Holy Cross in 
psychology and I have a master's in, in education and a, and a PhD in clinical psychology from UVA. My past work experiences include um, working at UMDNJ at the, uh, at the psychiatric emergency service where not only did I do clinical work, but I also did a, a fair amount of outreach to the community and would give talks to, to uh, police officers, library staff about mental health, you know, mentally ill folks. And uh, I always liked that work. I liked that sort of work I did. Um, since I've lived here, I've been involved in a number of, of uh, community groups. The one that's most relevant to the board is my, is my PTA work. Um, which, as many of you know from seeing me here, I, I, um, I actually came to my first board meeting, I was trying to figure it out, about 10 years ago because my, my son was going into first grade and I was concerned about class size. And, and uh, somebody at that meeting said, you ought to join this district legislative team. And so I, I did and I've been a part of that ev ever since from, uh, from 2008 to the current to June of this year, I was actually either chair or or a co-chair. And the goal of that of that committee, as you know, is to review legislative issues at the federal and state level, and also come to board meetings and learn about board happenings and board events and local education issues as well. And part of what we really tried to do that I'm very proud of is to not only work as a, as a group, we have a member from, from each school, um, but also to really you know, take the time to, to prepare documents for uh, parents to read. Over the years, I've written numerous legislative summaries as well as um, um, summaries about board happenings. Um, and I really feel proud of what we've been able to do. I think it's, it's a challenge now because I think folks go less to meetings and more reading, every, reading online. So we've tried to adjust with that. So finally, I guess I, I feel like I have a lot that I can offer uh, to the board. I'm a very level-headed person. I'm a good listener. I have a, a sound knowledge base, um, and I believe in public education. Uh, and so for those reasons, I am, I am seeking this open board seat. Thank you. So now we'll go to the question. <laughs> and the first question was, what do you think are the priorities that this district should focus on and why? I guess I would think of two general priorities, one being um, preserving what we have and the second being um, continuing to, to build on, on parent, guardian, school connections. So in the first area, preserving what we have in, in terms of a very strong curriculum, talented teachers, that, that make a learning in, in environment that is as positive for all, for all children as we can. And along with that, to also s support innovation, um, whether it's you know, technology or bringing Mandarin in or having uh, to have the resources av available to do something like, I liked when it was a decision to you know, pay for all the ninth and 10th grade, um, sorry, 10th and 11th graders to you know, take the PSAT. Like, I thought that was a very positive thing to give everybody access to that. But in being able to, to support what we have and, and uh, look for innovation, we have to be mindful of the ever-present 2% cap and the unfunded and funded mandates that we get from the state and uh, federal government. And I have seen that you know, when that first, when it went from four to two, I don't remember when that was, but I remember thinking, oh my gosh, where are we going to be in, you know, two years or three years? But um, you guys have hung in there, and I think I'm ready to be a part of that. 
decision making because I, I realize that it's only getting harder since it's unlikely that the 2% cap is going to change um, or that you know funding is we're finally going to be fully funded um, that would be nice but um, that's not going to happen either um, so that would be my first my, the first area that I would see that we'd need to continue to uh, focus on and the uh, second is 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 continuing the links that we've made with parents and guardians and again part of this is because of technology I was actually thinking today that when I started it when my kid when my son was in in kindergarten we were doing the you know PTA calls for you know absences at, at at school so we've come a long way so part of it is how we can reach out to, to parents and garden guardians more in a you know technology way and I think the 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 current um, uh, transition to the park testing which we're making is is a good example I I liked um, you know dr. Hayes and dr. mast a couple of years ago did those open-ended let us all try to do a couple of the of the of the questions and those were very well attended as was last year's info session about you know park what does it mean for us and um, and I learned a lot from watching Dr. Hayes because she was not uh, she was not defensive she was just like this is what's going to happen and if you choose not you know these are your are your options and I thought that went you know very well but it appears that the park isn't going anywhere so we're going to need to continue to do those sorts of educational opportunities for you know for for parents because I guess we'll get cut scores next month and then the you know uh, we're going to need to to continue to to educate parents and I would like to be a part of that I really like that and I think it's worthwhile I think that's my two prior I guess that's enough there are a lot okay. of other priorities in there. <laughs> sorry well it leads into the second question nicely which is um, if there are controversial decisions to be made if you're on the board what steps would you take in making those decisions I guess for me first of all I would stop talking I do like to talk but that would be a time that I would need to listen uh, I, I would see that there would be a, a you know, data gathering time where we would hear all all sides of the of the issue not um, not just the one that I'm familiar with and in you know collecting that data also look at are there any um, uh, federal state or local guidelines that we would have to follow that that would have an impact on what we would decide and then after getting all the you know data I would look for areas of of uh, commonality um, that we if there aren't any um, you know decisions still have to be made so then we do what we came here for which was to help each child in our district do as well as they can do so we would serve the best interests of all of, of, of all the children in making a, a decision and I guess when it was over I mean, and I would hope also that we that me and us as, as, as a board wouldn't let emotion get in in the way because I've been here for a lot of heated um, type um, arguments from the you know public and to keep that in mind and when it's all over I also think it's helpful in that kind of time to reach out to everybody to all the stakeholders to just let them know what happened to see if they had any other any other questions uh, so I would think those would be some of those steps that I would I would take in a controversial issue okay thank you um, we also wanted to ask, what are your thoughts about the Common Core? I think that the that the the Common Core, what I've looked at and what I've read about, is actually okay for the guidelines that it that it that it gives. If we take it as a guideline for our curriculum and that we can still choose our own our, our, our own curriculum, I do s support us as a nation having common 
um, uh, goals for our students because I think it helps. We've known over, over, over the years what, um, what looks one way in Massachusetts doesn't look the same in another state, and I like that idea that we would be on common ground. I think it also, you know, fits towards a a uh, global citizenshipness about our country and about how we are for the world. Um, so I don't I don't know the specifics of where the governor. I know the governor has a commission looking into if there are areas that we need that he would want to, um, you know, tweak for us as a as a, as a state, but I like the idea of having rigorous standards for our for all our our students. Okay. Um, we also wanted to ask this stuff is, is not going to disqualify anybody, but we're just curious if you have any connections to NJEA or any family members do. No, no, I do not. And finally, is there anything that we haven't asked you about that you wanted to comment on or tell us? Well, I like to read about, about education, and I have a couple of new things that I've been reading about over the last couple of months that I'd be, that I'd be interested in you know, talking with, with everyone about. Um, one is about this, I, uh, I was reading a, a, a study about, con I think they call it contemplation, education, which is bringing meditation, yoga, relaxation techniques into the school systems. And I know, I know some of our elementary school phys ed teachers have always done a little bit of, of, of yoga, but that's an area that I don't know if it's a possibility. I don't know what's feasible and what's not. Um, but that was one thing as, as, as well as I love recreational math things. I love math games. Um, I was one of those students who got to high school and felt I was a girl and I couldn't do math. And that does not happen in our, our district. And it's not going to happen with my daughter. She's in ninth grade. She's going to love math. So all, and I like reading about recreational math, different ideas. And I know that that's already here in the, you know, peop and the, um, I'm, I'm seeing that at, at the high school level. And I know it's, it, it starts er early with the everyday math as as well but i was i'm just sort of curious about that now we can bring more of that in okay so thank you very much and maybe you can tell eric martin eric that he's martin. next eric martin Hi, Eric. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to start off and give you an opportunity just to make an introductory statement. Um, while we have your information, the public doesn't, and okay. we are filming, so. Sure. sure. Well, first of all, uh, good evening, board members, administrators, students, parents, and members of the Scotch Plains Fanwood community. Uh, my name is Eric Martin. And it's with great enthusiasm that I'm here interviewing for the vacant seat of the Board of Education. I'm eager to serve my community and the Scotch Plains Fanwood School District that serves as at its core. As most of you do not know me, I would like to take a few minutes just to introduce myself and explain how and why I am here tonight. So my wife grew up in Scotch Plains and we moved here in 2006 after living in New York City. We have three children two boys who are five and seven years old. Uh, my five-year-old would probably insist that he's five and a half years old, so I'll <laughs> clarify that. Uh, they're both at Coles, and uh, we have a two-year-old daughter as well who will one day be at Coles as well. For myself, I grew up in Massapequa on Long Island in New York, so please don't tell any of my Long Island friends that I'm running for a board seat in New Jersey. <laughs> but, uh, but I had a wonderful experience in, public, in the public school in, on Long Island. 
I took advantage of all it had to offer and the many resources of the public school system. I was an active participant in team sports, the school newspaper, the honor society, band, and orchestra. I graduated from Hamilton College with honors in 1997 and was on the college's newspaper and participated in, in Hamilton's semester in Washington, D.C. program, where I was a White House intern during the Clinton administration. It was my experience in the White House that sparked my interest in government, civic responsibility, and community. And later that school year, I also expanded my studies internationally when I went abroad at Oxford University and the London School of Economics. So after I graduated from college, I worked at J.P. Morgan in New York City and in Geneva, Switzerland, primarily in the area of asset management. After four years at J.P. Morgan, I went to Hofstra Law School, where I was an editor on the Hofstra Law Review. And after graduating from law school, I worked as a corporate attorney for four years at uh, corporate law firms in both New Jersey and New York, primarily in the area of mergers and acquisitions, SEC uh, requirements, and corporate governance matters. So in a quest to really combine my interest in business and law, I worked as in-house counsel to a large manufacturing company in New Jersey. Uh, I provided advice on a wide variety of, of issues involving commercial law, contracts, and ethics. Now for the past four years, I've been the CFO and general counsel for a company in New York City whose budget is similar in size to actually that of the school district. As CFO and general counsel, I am responsible for overseeing and protecting and growing my company's assets. My main responsibilities require um, much of the same skills that are required of this board and in some of the same areas, such as budgeting, salaries, staffing issues, litigation, insurance, contract review, facilities management, logistics, retirement, benefits, uh, and of course, information technology. I would like this opportunity to draw upon my varied experience in business, in law, and in government to bring a unique perspective to the board, whether dealing with complex budgetary issues, contract negotiations, or administrative policies. I believe that my personality and work ethic would make me a valuable asset to the board, to the school district, and to the Scotch Plains family community. I'm excited for this opportunity to work with the board and serve our children and our community. Thank you again for your time and your consideration tonight. Thank you very much. So we'll begin with the first question, which is what do you think are the priorities that the district should focus on and why? Sure, sure. Um, I think it's always a priority to preserve our core curriculum and services that are offered to our students. It, but I also believe it's important to be innovative and to not be satisfied with the status quo. For example, uh, I know many in the education field have been talking about the importance of teaching children financial literacy and personal finance. I think we should leverage all the public and private free resources available to help our children learn the importance of financial literacy through programs, classes, workshops that are somehow integrated into cu the curriculum. Our children should learn at an early age the importance of saving and how to create a budget to avoid some of the dire situation that many adults find themselves in today. And just to illustrate this point, um, I use my son as an example. He thinks it's great that um, he's learning Spanish in second grade. He loves it, and it's obviously a foreign language to him, and he's doing, doing really well. Uh, and I figure if he can learn Spanish, uh, I think he can also start learning the basic language of finance and the concepts behind saving for the future. There are ways to introduce children to some of the basic, fundamental business concepts that will help them throughout their lives. Um, for example, several months ago, my wife and I started as a side business a gourmet snack food company that we've been selling at local street fairs and uh, gourmet grocery stores. My boys, who are now five and seven, have really enjoyed becoming involved in this experience and involved in the business so that they now understand that the hard work that is necessary to actually start a business, and they've even become quite the little salesman. <laughs> 
So I think it's a great experience for, ha for them to at least have a sense of what business entails and to be exposed to this entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, and furthermore, my snack food company has partnered with a nonprofit organization that helps disadvantaged children. So they really get to see, my children get to see firsthand um, how business and charity can actually work together and be mutually beneficial. So I think introducing our children to our basic finance and business concepts and experiences will help them in their future no matter what their career path may be. And as school districts are always looking for ways to do more with less, I think it's also should be a priority to continually seek new sources of revenue to fund school programs and services. I think some sources to consider could be the corporate sponsorships, whether it's advertising on athletic fields, or it could be a corporate or private donations or grants. Um, I think these could always be further researched and exploited if possible. Another example might be to develop alumni and fundraising programs similar to those created by colleges. Perhaps we can find an alumni fundraising model that would work for Scotch Plains to build a stronger longer sense of community among Scotch Plains graduates and families. Uh, another priority could be uh, focusing on fiscal responsibility and revenue generating ideas, um, but in addition, how do you get the parents and teachers involved in that process? I think one way to get people more involved in this process might be to reach as many parents as possible to tap their personal and business contacts that might benefit our children. So what I mean by this is, uh, I guess for, by example, several years ago I worked for a company that created bubble wrap. To encourage innovation among children, every year that, uh, every year that company sponsored a young inventors contest and they would award money and prizes to the children with the best innovations using bubble wrap might be a good idea to bring programs and contests like this to the attention of our students. Uh, it, might, it would also bring parents together where they can use their connections to bring opportunities to our students to help increase the breadth of educational opportunities available for our students and to also introduce them to new possible career paths. And I guess the final priority might be to focus on the maintenance of our schools and our facilities. We have to make sure that our learning environment is safe and comfortable for our children and our teachers and administrators. I, like, I think like people are proud of their house or their office or their college, our students will enjoy learning more, our teachers will enjoy teaching more if they are proud and comfortable in their schools. And I guess during my day job, I am a, uh, I'm the CFO and general counsel for a construction uh, company that provides light fixtures to a lot of the large projects in New York City. So I, I get to see firsthand how important uh, having new building and facilities is to the employees, and I think that would hold true here as well. Uh, so these are just a, some of the priorities that I would like to discuss with the board if I do have a chance uh, to become a board member. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so if you were a board member and you were making decisions in some of these areas, you led right into our next question, which is what steps would you follow in making a decision, especially about something that might be controversial? Sure. Uh, I would approach the process of making a difficult decision uh, pretty much in the same way that I approach any of the difficult decisions that I might have to make for my company on a day-to-day -day basis. As a lawyer, I'm always looking for a way to arrive at that fair and equitable solution that is backed by substantive facts and reasoning. In order to do this, my first step is always to research thoroughly the issue at hand. And this includes reading everything available, publications and literature that might highlight all sides of the issue. And as anyone who knows me will tell you, I enjoy researching pretty much anything that I can, whether I'm negotiating a contract, buying a car, or refinancing a mortgage, I always do my research. So once I understand the core of the issue at hand, I would discuss the issue with my colleagues, or in this case with the parents, the administrators, the teachers, even the students and other board members. After soliciting the opinions 
from people with various interests, I would then weigh my consideration of the facts, the opinions and concerns into a decision that is in the best interest of our students with also remaining in the board, within the board's parameters and philosophy while also being sensitive to the concern of others. While I know it's impossible to please everyone, I think we have to strive to do the best we can. I think the legal training and business perspective, ex business experience and perspective that I've had provides an excellent framework to make those difficult and tough decisions that might not necessarily be popular with all constituents. I think I can illustrate my decision-making process with a specific example. And uh, I know this topic of uh, user fees for extracurricular activities comes up when uh, there was kind of an economic tough time or a budget crisis. Um, and while I'm an advocate of the great benefits that extracurriculars provide students, and I encourage all students to participate in extracurriculars, the provision for extracurriculars has to be weighed against the economic environment in which we are faced at the time. I would first review the budget to determine that there are no other places to cut to reduce costs without sacrificing any of the core curriculum and services. Then I would identify and consider various opinions and alternatives weighing the sensitivity of the taxpayer's increased financial burden versus the goals of improving the educational opportunities for our children. Since cutting all funding to extracurriculars and eliminating extracurriculars is certainly, in my opinion, not in the best interest of students, I would, if necessary, propose that implementing user fees on some extracurricular activities might be the best middle ground we can reach during a budget crisis, provided that we do make exceptions to provide extracurricular, make exceptions for those who can't necessarily afford to pay. I think this is just an example of how I might go about making a controversial decision. Once again, it's impossible to please all constituents, but I think we have to do the best we can for our students and our community with the means we have available. Okay, thank you very much. So we have a couple of additional questions. Sure. And the first one is, what are your thoughts about the Common Core? Right, so I've, I've read about the Common Core and have certainly seen a lot of criticisms of it. I would like to hear kind of some firsthand um, recommendations from the teachers and, and the administrators and board members who are on the kind of the front lines and feeling the impact of it. Um, I have not dug into it and done my research. As I mentioned, I do do with all topics that I get involved with. Um, but I do think that it is important to understand what is set out and we have to be able to guide our teachers as to how to teach, whether it's um, we need to make sure that they do uh, know how to teach the requirements of the core and whether it's important or not, um, it is crucial that uh, the teachers do what the board sets out in the philosophy. So we do have to kind of manage to that curriculum. Whether the curriculum is, is right, I am not positive yet, but that would be something that I need to do further research on. Okay. And another question, this really isn't going to affect our decision, yes or no, but we're just curious because it does affect some things. Sure. Um, do you, are you, have any connection to the NJEA? Uh, I do not. Okay. All right. Okay. And, um, are there any things that we didn't ask you that you wanted to bring to our attention or comment on? Um, I think I highlighted. I think, um, as I mentioned, I think it's my, my experience in business and law where I, I review contracts, I deal with vendors. Um, I, I know that's an important part of all of your jobs, and I, I think my experience would, uh, would be helpful in uh, making the school district as, as good as everybody here wants to make it. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, we really appreciate uh, you sharing your information firsthand with us, sure. Eric. And if you would tell AJ Watson, he's next. Sure, thank you.
Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? We're okay, and um, even though we have the information that you sent in, the public will be watching this on TV. So uh, we would like uh, to start with giving you an opportunity to introduce yourself and say a little bit about yourself. Cool. Uh, my name is AJ Watson. A um, little bit about myself. I grew up in Fanwood. I uh, went to all three public schools here, so Brunner Park and the high school. After graduating high school, I went down to Virginia Tech, um, got an accounting degree and finance degree. Um, after Virginia Tech graduating, I moved back to New Jersey, um, spent five plus years in Hoboken, um, spent most of my time in the city working for a few different companies. I am currently working for, as of today, the company, um, I work for a tech company in travel and transportation was bought by Verifone, so I'm now a Verifone employee as of today, which is just <laughs> crazy timing. Um, so that's still figuring itself out. Um, moved back to Scotch Plains, closed in June, um, and moved in with my wife on um, July. We got married July 31st, so newly married and um, new, newly homeowner, I guess you can say. Um, that sums up most of my introduction and background. Okay. Does that hit most of the points? That's great. So we'll start with the questions, and you uh, have the first two, so we'll begin with number one, which is what do you think are the priorities that the district should focus on and why? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so one of the priorities that I believe the district should focus on, and that's fairly relevant to me, um, is the use of technology and leveraging technology um, in education. Um, my wife is actually a teacher uh, in Summit, um, and getting that type of experience and feedback, they've started using a lot more technology. And um, for me, and kind of what I do every day, uh, leveraging technology makes sense. Um, obviously, things are a lot different from when I was at the high school um, in terms of technology, but. Um, I see it as a resource um, and doing everything in terms of increasing that resource and leveraging it to increase education needs is, I find that really important. Um, other goals and um, visions, I guess you can say, for the board and the district, um, what I also deal with is budget. So I think our company now uses the word optimizing budget. I think it's important to um, one, spend correctly, figure out where to spend, um, and make sure that it's actually getting used correctly. So make sure it's the funds that get used actually make an impact. Um, and that's how you should kind of allocate resources based on that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so thinking about those priorities, technology and budget, or possibly others, um, if there are controversial decisions that become come before you as a board member, what would be the steps you would follow in making a decision? So the steps I would follow um, would be pretty standard to my current decision-making process um, with a few caveats. Um, one would be gathering all the information possible, um, whether quantitative or qualitative. The one kind of new caveat in I guess um, a board situation is evaluating all the stakeholders um, and identifying all the stakeholders. There's obviously a lot of different parties involved. Um, you have teachers, you have students, faculty, staff, admin, um, and the town, and taxpayers as well. Um, so one, gathering all the information um, from all the stakeholders. Two, weighing out what the priorities are of the board and what the decision will lead to. Um, so establishing what the goal um, of any decision is. And then three, weighing all of the pros and cons based on those priorities of the board and what the decision is affecting. Okay. So we have two other questions. One is, what are your thoughts about the Common Core? So I hear from the Common Core from the teacher side. Um, I like the idea of having a, a national kind of um, cores, I guess, principles, um, and making sure that all students are on the same page um, and have the same guidelines. Um, I always 
think that there's having one set of rules is a good idea. There's always some flexibility um, that I see in any type of decision making and kind of procedures and um, guidelines. So I like the idea of the, the national um, common core, um, but also I do think that there's some flexibility, a need for flexibility on a, a local basis and case by case and grade by grade. Okay. And I think I'm going to guess the answer to this, but do you have any uh, connections or relatives who are connected to the NJEA? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was. It does. It's not going to influence our decision, but it's just nice for us to know. Yeah, no worries. Uh, my sister is Erin Mulman. Um, I uh, believe she's. I don't know what her official title title is now. It's supervisor of elementary education. <laughs> that that is it. Um, so she was, I guess, here a couple months ago. Um, she'd also told me to mention that I believe my father has some type of contracts with the board. Is that right? Indirectly. Indirectly? Okay. So indirect contracts. I wasn't actually aware of that until my sister told me. So, um, yeah, that's my connections. Is and your wife's probably an NJEA member, too? Yes. She is um, tenured at Summit, so she's been there for five years. She had maternity for one year. So. Okay. Um, are there any questions that you thought we were going to ask you that we didn't ask you something that you want to comment on or bring to our attention? Sure. Um, I guess one of the things I put in the, the letter is why I would want to be a board member, which mm -hmm. I, I guess is uh, an important question to ask. Um, so I don't have kids currently. My wife and I don't have kids. We plan to one day. Um, I think there's a vested interest on my part in seeing the success of the school district. Um, so obviously the more important an impact we can make um, in terms of the board, the better it is for my hope or hopefully future kids, um, their future. Um, also growing up here, I feel like there's some type of give back um, and giving back to the community I grew up with that I was raised in. Um, so making any positive impact on the area and the town that I grew up in, I think is really important. Um, one of the other questions I was prepared to ask, if you asked, was uh, <laughs> why I think I would be good at this. Um, and, um, so there's a few different reasons. Um, one, obviously having um, a wife as a teacher, I, I get a different insight um, on some of the issues that probably are um, brought up with the board. Two, not having kids, um, I feel like there's probably a different perspective as well. Um, not having kids in the system, um, I feel like that's probably a, a big, um, always in the back of anybody's mind if they're making decisions of, obviously you wanna have, have your own kids protected and do what's in their best interest, but you also wanna make sure it's in the best interest of pretty much all the children. So I think not having that, um, not having children right now, um, is a benefit. Um, and three, my, for why I think I'll be good at this, um, I work in the private sector. I don't really have any connections. I've never really worked in the public sector. Um, so I probably, I know a lot of people here probably do as well, um, have a, a different perspective in terms of decision making, in terms of policies, um, and just in terms of procedure on how to make decisions. Um, and working directly with budget since I do have a budget for my job and career so it's not something that's foreign to me. Um, I do have a lot of experience in that um, and that, I think that would be something positive to bring to the board. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think we're going to switch places mm -hmm. and we're going to ask all of you to come here Okay. And we're going to go inside because we need to deliberate, and then we'll be back as soon as we've been able to make a decision. We have a motion to go into exec. Oh, motion. Motion. Oh, yeah. Can I have a motion to go into exec? Thank you. Second. Thank <laughs> All you. those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Okay, so we had a motion. We're back in public again. and. Um, it took us a little while because honestly it was uh, not an easy decision. We're so thrilled that we had three 
um, very talented people uh, who were interested in filling this seat. Um, and um, what I'd like to say is whoever doesn't end up being um, elected tonight, I hope they'll consider running. Um, I think that's the feeling of the entire board. Um, I, I forget the exact timeline now, but I think um, you have to turn something into the county clerk by June or some date like that, and we announce it and, and so forth. So um, in any case, uh, is there, does anyone have a motion? Uh, Ms. Bauer, I'd like to move that the Board of Education of Scotch Plains Fanwood appoint Cindy Clancy to fill a vacant position on the board for the term of one year commencing immediately and continue until the November 16th Board of Education election. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, Mrs. Saradaki, do you want to call the roll? Uh, Mr. Whitehouse? Yes. Dr. Kulikowski? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Shermer? Yes. Mrs. Winkler? Yes. Mrs. Cleary? Yes. Mrs. Bauer? Yes. So congratulations to uh, Cindy, and um, I do want to again occur encourage both uh, Eric Martin and AJ, who's one of our alums, to uh, consider up applying for a board position uh, in, in the regular elections. And thank you for coming out tonight and for being interested. Thank you. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, meeting is adjourned.